Hi and welcome, my name is Nicole with MorningTours.com. Today's video, I'm doing an early summer garden tour. I thought it would be really fun to show you what is growing, what we're still waiting on, things we're harvesting, the good, the bad, and everything in between. If you're new here, we would love for you to hit that subscribe button. We have all kinds of videos on our channel, everything from candle making to canning and everything in between. Before we begin the tour, I wanted to just give a brief overview on the good things that are going on with the gardening this year and the not so great things. The only major issues I've had in the gardening this year is slugs and I had a groundhog eat some of my green beans. Now with the green beans, I just put a fence around them and thankfully they're making a comeback so hopefully those are in the clear. I just realized I have a green bean. Oh my goodness, there's green beans. I didn't even realize that they were on here already. So I guess they did make a great comeback. As far as the slugs go, I caught them early on and I did some research and learned that if you use crushed eggshells and coffee grounds, sprinkle those around your plants that are being eaten and that will keep the slugs away. I did learn though that you do have to reapply about once a week, but if you stay on top of it, it should keep the slugs away, hopefully. The good things that are going on in the garden this year is I would say this is the first year that I have not felt overwhelmed by the work. In previous years, I've always approached the garden with, I've got to grow as much as I possibly can so I can put as much food as I can actually facilitate and put it into storage. And I do think we should have goals and we should be motivated to grow things in our garden. But this year I decided to take a slower approach and actually enjoy the process of gardening and not really worry about how much I get out of the garden. Just do my best that I can with these two hands and then kind of let the Lord take care of the rest. Now, as far as the work is involved, I what I've kind of been doing is just piddling away at the garden a little bit every day. But because I'm taking this approach, I find that I spend longer periods of time in the garden. And so I think just kind of working at it a little bit each day rather than saving it all for one day or two days a week has worked out really, really well for me. And I've really, really enjoyed the whole process. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by your garden work, I would just take a moment and step back and evaluate and ask yourself what your goals are, What's your intentions and just kind of go from there because I think sometimes we can set really high expectations and that just sets us up for failure. So I think just bringing it down a few notches and saying, hey, I'm going to try here and then who knows, you may achieve up here and then look at there, you're an overachiever. So bring the level down a little bit so that you can meet your expectation or maybe exceed it just a little bit. Let's head over to the kitchen garden and I'll show you what's going on in that space. My kitchen garden or cottage garden has been one of my favorite spaces to work in this year. And I think it's just because it's close proximity to the house. We're playing, my kids are playing in the driveway a lot. So it's easy for me to just come over here and work a little bit, but I love this space. And it's really enjoyable to look at when we come up the driveway, when we come home, we can see our tomato plants and my daughter's beautiful flower bed. And it's just a really beautiful thing to see. But so far, everything is doing pretty well in here. My tomatoes are doing amazing. They are growing really, really well. And we've already harvested two tomatoes from our plants, which I have to say, this is the earliest I've ever harvested tomatoes from my own plants. So super excited about that and they were delicious. Nothing beats a garden fresh tomato. If you notice in my bed, I have a big copper pole in the center of my bed. I've been experimenting with electroculture and I will be doing a future video on this, but I wanted to test it for a couple years before I did that. And I can say it has been reaping positive results. So that will be for a future video. But if you notice the plants that are closest to the copper pole are my biggest and I really really do think it's an amazing thing so I will be sharing that very very soon but the tomato plants are doing really really well as far as my pepper plants go the pepper plants got hit pretty hard by the slugs but some of them made a comeback I did lose a few but I think we will get some peppers as far as my basil goes the basil again got hit pretty hard by the slugs but they are making a comeback as well and I've harvested quite a few leaves off the basil. 
my green beans were eaten by a groundhog and as you can see they are fenced in like Fort Knox. I have not had any issues with any pets eating them and thankfully they made a comeback. I really wasn't sure if they would because the groundhog had pretty, pretty much chomped off the tops and they were so beautiful but thankfully they're making a comeback and I think we will get some green beans. Now that we've discussed everything that's going on in the kitchen garden, let's head down to the big garden down the hill. Okay, my large garden space is doing very, very well. We are getting ready to harvest our garlic. I will probably do that tomorrow. We had one week where it was very hot. It was in the high 80s and low 90s. I think it even got up to 96 one day. And I always look for that really hot week to kind of dry the garlic out. And then I wait for a rain and that's when I pluck it. So we had some good rain over the weekend. So I think by tomorrow morning it will be ready to harvest. So I'll be excited to see how those garlic bulbs really turned out. My potato crop is flourishing. The plants are very big. Some of them have started to flower. So once they flower, then the dying off process begins. So I'll probably be looking to that in July and harvesting by the end of July into August. Our asparagus crop did very well this year. Usually we only harvest asparagus during the month of May, but we have been harvesting asparagus up till just a couple days ago which is that's never happened so we've been eating a lot of asparagus and I've had enough to give away too so I've really been thankful for that and it's been really delicious the only other things I have planted in this space is I have summer squash cucumbers and then my son really wanted to plant a pumpkin seed but we missed the opportunity to do so but thankfully we went to the produce stand and they had some larger pumpkin plants so we just planted that and it did have a little bit of a shock and the leaves turned yellow but there's some new growth on there so hopefully it will do okay and adjust okay but otherwise he'll be very sad but I guess that's the learning curve with gardening is there's disappointments but there's also exciting surprises too but as far as the summer squash goes it's doing really well and I'm kind of attempting this caging thing going on I don't know if it's gonna work some of them the arms are growing over the cage and some aren't I was trying to get some of it off of the ground so it'd be easier to pick we'll see how it goes I'm just trying something new and I tried the same cage with the cucumbers. The cucumbers are a little slow this year. They're not growing very quickly. They look great and they look very bushy and so I'm hoping that we will have a good cucumber harvest maybe by the end of July into August. So we'll just have to wait and see. All of our berry plants down there, some are doing well, some have not produced yet. We planted blackberries last late summer into fall. I don't think we're gonna get berries this year, but probably next year. Same goes for the raspberry plants. My elderberries are doing amazing. We did harvest some flowers for elderberry tea. It's a great immune booster in the summertime to make some tea from the flowers. But as far as the rest of it goes, I'm just holding off and letting those flowers turn into berries. As always thank you for joining us in today's video I hope you found it encouraging and helpful I would love to hear what's going on in your gardens let us know in the comments below the good the bad and everything in between there's no such thing as a perfect garden but as long as we're trying our best and enjoying the process I think that's what matters the most if you have some extra time today click the link morningchores.com in the description below head over there there's more information on gardening preserving homesteading everything in between you'll find something enjoyable hopefully in the meantime i'm going to take my freshly harvest garlic bulb start the curing process and enjoy the rest of the evening we will see you guys on the next video